it is my great pleasure to introduce lead system architect, Mark Cerny. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for the warm welcome, and thank you all for being here today. As um, Andy mentioned, my role on the development of the Next Generation Platform started about five years ago. At that time, we began to look at how the, the console architecture could free developers from painful technological limitations and enable them to create the game experiences that they'd always been dreaming of making. We also looked at how the whole PlayStation ecosystem could be evolved as well to allow the player to take a dynamic, preference-driven path through the world of content. So when we started this process, it was the early days of the PlayStation 3, which is to say, at a time of great transition in technology and how we use it. Every major console, all the way from the Atari 2600, which was the dominant console when I started in games some 30-something years ago, all the way up through the PlayStation 2, had pretty much been a single-purpose device. Insert the cartridge, the CD, the DVD, power it on, play your game. That's all they did, and, and that was fine. That was the world we lived in then. But at the time of the launch of the PlayStation 3, all of that was in flux. The, the world was becoming a connected place, and a single device was now expected to provide a, a range of services and applications. Now, PS3 has done pretty well in these respects. It's the top platform for Netflix. But as a console designed before this revolution hit, there are limits to the functionality that it can provide in this new world. In addition, since the launch of PlayStation 3, um, we've seen a proliferation in the number and variety of devices that people own and interact with. With so many platforms to support, much less value is found today in exotic technologies such as blast processing or a supercomputer on a chip. I'm proud of what we accomplished with Cell on PlayStation 3, but at the same time, the need to radically customize technology can interfere with the design innovation that's so central to game creation. So for PlayStation 4, while we knew that the core performance of the console would be vital to its success, the cross-disciplinary team that we assembled had several additional goals. For one, we wanted to make sure that nothing would come between the player, excuse me, the platform, and the joy of play. When I think back to the launch of the PS1, there was a, a real fun factor that was an intrinsic part of the PlayStation DNA. The whole world was our audience, and, and we had a remarkable time evangelizing the message that gaming was fun. We also wanted to be sure that the system architecture could fluidly connect the player to a, a larger world of experiences and provide easy access to everything PlayStation has to offer across the console and mobile spaces, and the PlayStation Network. And finally, we wanted to hear from developers. We spoke to dozens of the best teams in the world. We wanted to know what was important to them. We wanted to make them happy. Because if they were happy, we knew we could unleash the uh, creativity and innovation that would result in a true next generation experience. Our goal was to create an architecture that would facilitate the expression of their ideas. Now, we couldn't come right out and say in 2008 or so, what would you like to see in a next-gen console? We had to talk our way around the topic. But they knew what we meant, and their comments were invaluable in crafting the system specs. And we were able to create, in PlayStation 4, a platform by game creators for game creators. It is a powerful and accessible system and it has a deep feature set to support the ongoing development and evolution of gaming itself. Now, the architecture that we chose is, is like a PC in many ways, but supercharged to bring out its full potential as a gaming platform. For the uh, CPU, we chose the most familiar architecture on the planet, the x86, uh, allowing us to tap into over three decades of programming expertise. For the graphics processor, we decided to use a highly enhanced PC GPU, something that would be easy to develop for in the early days of the platform lifecycle, but at the same time, a, a GPU with remarkable long-term potential. 
And for system memory, I'm proud to announce that we are equipping the system with eight gigabytes of high-speed unified memory, both satisfying the number one developer request for ease of game creation and also increasing the richness of content achievable on the platform. And the system memory is backed by the massive local storage that only a hard drive can provide. Overall, this architecture is designed to ensure that the very best games and the most immersive experiences will reach the player. Now, the next few demos are live, so I get the pleasure of sharing with you, for the first time, the new controller. And here it is, the DualShock 4. Thank you. So, during the development of the DualShock 4, we worked with key partners in the development community to enhance the feel of the joystick and the trigger buttons. The uh, result is a much tighter sense of control over in-game actions. We also um, took this as an opportunity to enhance the rumble capabilities and reduce the controller latency. And finally, we added a few new features. Um, a touchpad as a new form of input, a share button and a headphone jack to enhance social interactions, and a light pad as a, uh, excuse me, a light bar as a simpler, more friendly way to identify players. And this new controller was designed in tandem with a second peripheral, a stereo camera that can sense the depth of the environment in front of it and track the 3D position of the controller via its light bar. Now, this first live demo it uh, shows the payoff from the augmented PC architecture. This is Unreal Engine 4 from Epic, running in real time on prototype hardware. There's some very sophisticated technology here, GPU accelerated particle systems and realistic transmissive materials with substantial subsurface scattering. And this is all running in real time. I can look around as the animation plays using the touchpad input. Not only do we have the power to drive this level of application, but we also have, in PlayStation 4, an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Now, as to how we accomplish this, <clears throat> PlayStation 4 is centered around a powerful APU that combines eight CPU cores with a state-of-the-art GPU with almost two teraflops of computational performance. Putting CPU and GPU on the same die gives them streamlined access to a common pool of memory. And with PlayStation 4, we're taking an unprecedented step. For system memory, we're using GDDR5, the type of memory typically reserved for uh, top-of-the-line, high-end graphics cards. This gives us 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and provides a further boost to the GPU performance. Now, earlier I said we were using a highly enhanced PC GPU. Principally, we've modified the GPU to make compute easier, which is to say we've made it practical to use the GPU as a general-purpose computational device. This next live demo is a million object physics simulation from Havoc. This is primarily running on the GPU, not the CPU. Tasks that can fully occupy the CPU cores will be achievable using just a fraction of the PlayStation 4 GPU. Overall, our goal has been to architect the system so as to support a breadth of experiences. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the development community will choose to use this tool that we've provided for them. Truth is, um, I'm making a game too. In my case, I'm focusing on that joy of play I remember so well from the early PlayStation days. So here's a quick look at the title I'm directing. War has come to our peaceful land. We must send our best to neutralize this threat. A veteran explorer, military might. Um, yes, Doctor. I would like to make a small addition to the team. Behold my greatest creation, Mac. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. He looks a little delicate to me. Knack is capable of explosive growth. 
He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. Knack. You're no human. Why do you work for them? Victor's up to something. The next step of human evolution begins now. The world is about to change, and he'll be the one who changed it.